Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're doing the first episode of the Why on the Cube series. If you read the title, you probably know that today we're going to be talking about TPS and what the good amount of TPS is. TPS is an acronym for turns per second, and, well, it's how many turns you do per second. How you calculate it is by dividing the total amount of turns you do in a certain time period in seconds over the amount of time. So let me do an example for you guys. So let's choose an algorithm, and in this case, we're gonna do a jperm because it's fast. And so the time we got is 0 0.958. What we can do is divide that by the total number of moves in a jperm, which is 13 moves. So what we can do is take the turns, so that'd be 13, and we can divide that by our time, which is 0 0.958. And of course, you don't have to use a graphing calculator. I just happen to have one by hand, so use it. And when we press enter, we get 13.5, about 13.57, which means I'm doing approximately 13 or 14 moves in one second. Now, of course, I'm doing an algorithm, so my TPS is going to be a lot higher than average. Some of the pros, such as Felix Zemdax, have an average TPS throughout their entire solve of 9. However, most better cubers or average cubers have a lower TPS. So today, let's talk about what the best TPS to have is. You might be wondering whether or not having a high TPS is good, and for the most time, it's actually not. And the reason why is F2L look ahead. Some of the more advanced cubers may know that look ahead is where you're already seeing the next pair as you're doing this pair. So you can do the pair very fast without having to worry about looking for a next pair after you've done the pair. And when you have a super high TPS, it's usually very hard to do look ahead because your your hands are like, you know, moving so fast that it's almost blurry. So usually you want to slow down in order to have better look ahead and you can practice to get that TPS higher while still retaining your look ahead. However, having too slow of a TPS is not good either. So I have a Sune case here, and if I do this case super slow, I'm basically wasting time because I can do this case very fast, and if you're purposely slowing down just to do look ahead when there's no look ahead to do, such as in OLL or PLL, it's not worth the time. So simply, in conclusion, when there's look ahead to do, such as in the first two layers with the cross and the four FTL pairs, make sure to slow down to a speed you're comfortable with looking ahead to some of the other pairs or maybe your next cross piece. However, on a top layer with OLL and PLL, when there's really no point in look ahead, make sure to increase your TPS so you get a faster time overall with your algorithms. That's all for today's why on the Q video. If you have any questions, make sure to put them down below in the comments so I can make more videos like this. And of course, if you have any comments or suggestions, put them down below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye.